Hey everyone, Keith McGinnis here, KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. So let's create a rock edge and get this piece prepped for epoxy. I'm using a cut saw shaping disc, and I gotta tell you, this thing is really aggressive. It works tremendously well, but it is very really aggressive. So you do have to take some practice um, and be really careful with it because the shaping disc itself doesn't appear to be sharp, but it is very sharp. And as you can see, it cuts. It cuts pretty deep and it cuts pretty fast. And all I'm trying to do here is I'm not I'm not getting real aggressive. I, I'm just trying to start building some character before we start to add some bondo. So that's the cuts all shaping disc. I don't know if you can purchase those locally. I bought that one off of Amazon. I think it's probably going to last me a lifetime. I know I've had it for a couple of years, but you can see how. It doesn't take much, as you saw how I went around that with the grinder. And again, I'm not putting real deep grooves in there. I'm just kind of starting to build some character. I get a little bit on top as well as the sides. And you have to decide what kind of rock edge that you want. If you want an aggressive rock edge or if you want a mild rock edge. I do like going up over the top of the rock edge. Um, and, and again, it'll depend on how aggressive you want to get with it. But now that I've got that all ground down, it's time to add some Bondo and build even a little bit more character. All right, we're gonna mix up some Bondo. <clears throat> now Bondo is going to set up based upon how much hardener that you put in it. If you don't put enough hardener in there, it's gonna take forever to set up. It eventually will, it's just gonna take a long time. You put too much hardener in there, you're not going to have near enough time to work it. So, I'm mixing up quite a bit here, and this is probably not enough. Might, that might be enough to get me around this rock edge. But I'm going to be cautious of how much hardener I put in there, because if it sets up on me too fast, then I just wasted some Bondo, right? Don't want to waste any Bondo. All right. Get the lid back on that bondo as soon as possible so it doesn't have a tendency to dry out. Uh, it's fairly warm today, so i got to be a little bit careful I don't get too much hardener in here. And before I get started, what's important, uh, bondo needs to have a mechanical bond. So uh, I'll get a good mechanical bond because of the grinder, and uh, you probably can't see the, the grinding marks in here, but that was a pretty aggressive grinding disc that I have on there. So the Bondo is going to bond, but what's really important is you need to be, you need to get that Bondo pressed into the pores. You can't just put a layer of Bondo on there and expect it to bond. So there are some oils that are in the Bondo, and sometimes you have to stir the can when you open it up. You'll see those oils in the can. But uh, when you put it on the surface, if you're doing a, a smooth edge, you want to press that Bondo, that first layer, you want to press that in really hard and then come back and then put a layer over the top of that. With the rock edge, I'm going to be using my hand and I'm going to press that in as much as I can into those pores before I get a little bit of buildup on there. And regarding buildup, um, Bondo is an auto body filler, body filler. Uh, I don't use Bondo brand, I use, I don't know if you can see it over here, it's called Evercoat Pro Grade Body Filler. Um, and, and it's not meant to go on thick. And I don't want it on thick because all I'm doing is just using the Bondo to help create a little bit more character uh, after I've done the grinding on here. So, I'm going to put about that much, and that might be just a little bit too much. You can see how much I have on there. That's a pretty wide ribbon. And that hardener actually incorporates in really well and fairly quickly. When you stir the Bondo, you don't want to stir it, you want to press it into itself until you have a nice uniform color. When you've got that uniform color and no more streaks of your hardener, the cream hardener, then you know you've got it mixed thoroughly. You don't get it mixed thoroughly, it's not going to dry completely or evenly. I don't know if you can tell, but that actually incorporates very quickly and it mixes very quickly. Now I'm on the clock. And I put quite a bit of hardener in there, and I may not get through that whole amount because it is warm here today. 
So, paste makes waste. No more streaks. Let's get it on the surface. There we go. So you can see I'm rubbing that in really well. So I want to get that rubbed into the pores. Then once I've got that in the pores, then I can start adding just a little bit of character to it. And actually I need to get a little bit of bondo on the top because I've got a seam up there. I might just do that now. So you saw how much I mixed up. I got all the way around that entire rock edge, uh, and I got some on uh, this area where I'm going to have my seam, and uh, none to spare. So now I can just pull off that top layer. <laughs> Almost made it. So I don't have a whole lot of Bondo on there, but I've got enough on there that I can give it some character and make for a pretty darn cool looking rock edge. I won't go all the way down. And you can see that it was, wasn't real strategic of how I slapped that Bondo on there. I just tried to be real random with it. And again, building character. And what I like to do on the corners, and I'll show you here. When I use my grinder on there, I grind it over the top. And then I can get some Bondo on top. And that makes for a really, really cool looking effect. So after everything is all said and done, that's what that rock edge is going to look like. So it doesn't take a lot of Bondo. It's the grinder and that little bit of Bondo that really creates all that character. And that's how that corner piece uh, ended up looking. Uh, it's really cool. So, got a nice rock edge on there. Once again, this is going to be a fireplace hearth. So once the Bondo has dried, I'm either going to use 150 grit or 220 grit. It depends on how aggressive that rock edge is. Uh, I'll use 150 to knock down a lot of the highs, or if it's going to be a pretty aggressive rock edge, I might just use 150, just kind of knock everything down. So you just kind of have to play it by ear and uh, mainly get the high points. Again, down. this is a fireplace hearth, so normally I want to run my hand across there and make sure there's not any really sharp edges. Uh, and this important for a fireplace hearth, just as it is on a countertop. All right, everything's been sanded, everything's been prepped, everything's ready, and now it's time to apply the undercoat paint. I am using the Stone Coat Black Undercoat Paint, but before I go any further, uh, I really want to stress the importance of when you're done sanding MDF, the dust is very, very fine. Uh, don't just blow off the project uh, with a blowgun. Uh, you need to take paper towels uh, before it goes from my shop into my studio. I use a towel to wipe it down. Then when I get into the studio, I take a roll of paper towels and wipe across it uh, and continue to get that brown dust up on that roll of paper towels. So uh, in order to get really, really good adhesion with your paint, you've got to have a good clean surface, right? So make sure that you clean that off really, really well before you apply your paint. Now, if you are applying the Stone Coat Undercoat paint, it's recommended to wait a minimum four hours. Um, so I have waited my four... Oh, and if it's any other type of latex paint, you want to wait a minimum of 24 hours because of the ammonia content and allowing it to off-gas. <clears throat> Another little tip right here while I'm wiping off my dust. When I have a rock edge, I always wipe the dust to the back side uh, just because I don't want those dust particles getting down into that rock edge, it just makes it more difficult to, to get it out or for that dust to get trapped in there. So now I'm using some different colors of spray paint, so I'm going to fog my rock edge. Um, the colors I'm using are relative to the colors that are going to be in my design, which are brass, bronze, 
a little bit of, I think I've got a black metallic, and that actually is pearl mist, just to get a little bit of white in there. And all I'm trying to do is, is add some more character to that rock edge, and then of course we know that the epoxy flows over that edge, that's where it's going to be the thinnest. So I want to make sure that I've got color on the edge, on the rock edge, and then also I put some on the surface as well. So as we kind of go over some close-ups here, I mean it's nothing earth shattering. Uh, to fog your edges, but it really does make a difference to the point where even when I put my color coat on, if there's some areas of that rock edge that end up not getting the color coat on there or they end up dry, I'm okay with that because I've got color already there. Um, anytime, I, anytime I do any countertop, as soon as I put my first, uh, pour my first epoxy onto the board, I grease my edges. I just want to make sure that as I'm starting to work that surface that any epoxy that's going to flow over that edge is flowing over a greased edge. See how you can tell some of the Bondo ended up on that top surface of that rock edge, like right there? And then when we get over to this corner piece also, you'll see some kind of ridges, if you will, of some Bondo. Keep in mind what that looks like now and then what that looks like once I get the color coat put on there. It really gives a cool effect. It's like the metallics kind of slide off of those higher areas and, and give a really neat effect. So be sure and click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of upcoming tutorials, including a full tutorial on how I created this design for this fireplace hearth, which really turned out gorgeous. Customers absolutely loved it and went from this old travertine tile for their fireplace hearth to now one that they absolutely love. Blends in with all the colors and looks fantastic. Thanks again everyone and once again this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs and we'll see you on the next video.